In the shot of a crowded Australian city street at five o'clock in the afternoon, any one of these hurrying workers going home could be a Soviet illegal resident. Emil Goldfuss, living quietly as an artist in New York, was one. His true identity, Colonel Rudolf Abel of the KGB. Gordon Lonsdale, holding an office job in London, was another. His true identity, Conan Molody of the Russian Intelligence Service. For five years, the Soviet Embassy in Canberra stood vacant until the Soviet Union decided to re-establish diplomatic relations in 1959, and of course, their legal residency as well. Mr. Strepoff, as mentioned earlier, was one of the first arrivals. The Australian Security Intelligence Organization, or ACO, left Mr. Skripov alone for over a year while he explored his new environment. He visited all the standard tourist attractions, including Taronga Park Zoo, the Sydney Harbour Bridge, Coogee and other Sydney beaches. At the end of a year, he knew all about Canberra and Sydney, and he was quite convinced ACO had forgotten him. But they hadn't. They were there at Taronga Park Zoo to photograph his first clandestine meeting with Sylvia, the Australian woman who helped to unmask him. I am Sylvia. When I first met Ivan Fedorovich Skripov in March of 1961, I didn't know that he'd been in Australia almost two years. I didn't know what he was really doing. In fact, I never knew his name was Ivan Skripov until he was declared persona non grata. I simply knew him as John. There was a good deal I did not know, and over the months, the officials of the Australian Security Intelligence Organization, known as ASIO, who monitored my contacts with Skripov from the day I met him, had to explain it to me. The beginning was simple enough because I did know what a diplomat was, and something about what diplomats do. Our meetings for the first year or so were uneventful, and ASIO couldn't quite decide what Mr. Skripov wanted. He gave me £425, which I handed to ASIO, and presents for Christmas. We had almost given up hope when Mr. Skripov finally showed his true colours by giving me some red capsules, and a small bottle of fluid to bring up secret writings test. His instructions were most meticulous. He told me I would receive a friendly letter through the post from time to time, signed by Teresa. On the reverse side of the letter, there would be important instructions for me printed in secret ink. To bring up the secret message, I'd need, as well as the capsules and the fluid, a kettle of boiling water, a rubber glove, some cotton wool, a tumbler, and a teaspoon. I had first to put three teaspoons of the liquid into a glass, then dissolve one capsule in it. The liquid is colorless, suspiciously like vodka as a matter of fact. I was told before applying it to steam the letter, but I think Mr. Skripov must have got his instructions from Moscow mixed up because it works just as well if you don't steam the letter first. The glove is necessary when handling this liquid, because if it gets on the skin, it will turn it purple. The letter is swabbed, then steamed again. Watch now as the secret writing appears in the top left-hand corner. Actually, his first letter was only a test, so I could practice bringing up the secret writing. In March 1962, Mr. Skripoff asked me to go to a water meter near Sydney Harbour Bridge. Here is a part of the secret recording made as he gave me instructions. Here's a, a, a long I know that, yes, I know that too. Yes, so Sydney Harbour Bridge pavilion and the lookout would be the entrance from the other left hand side, you see. And so at any rate, that's sitting out of the in the half of the bridge, you see what, what we met. So you go along, uh, there's a glass, a uh, green area, and there's a lawn, you see, and some palm trees and so 